The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, and Eiffel. I'm doing a double feature on this one since I saw both movies back to back. I don't really have much to say about Eiffel. The actors were really good and believable in their roles, and the movie really sells you in on this awe-inspiring project they took on at the end of the 19th century. When the movie focuses on the creative process and the construction of the tower, it's really good. But unfortunately, the movie's main focus is the love story between Gustav Eiffel and his lost love, Adrienne. It's a serviceable love story that you do get into, but it steals the spotlight from what I came here to watch. It sort of has the same problem as James Cameron's Titanic. I came here to see this, not this. So I do recommend it, but know what you're in for. Now, on to the unbearable weight of massive talent. This movie was fun. I had really high expectations after watching Pig last year. This movie didn't quite live up to my hype, but it was still good. I love Nicolas Cage. He stars in a couple of my all-time favorite movies, and they wouldn't be without him. The Holy Trinity, of course, Gone in 60 Seconds, and Mandy. In this movie he stars as himself, a caricature of himself, the meme version of Nicolas Cage. And for him to just own that and make the best out of it is really cool, and I don't really see any other actor doing what he just did. The movie doesn't come off as an ego-driven, dick-stroking project at all. In fact, maybe quite the opposite. And if you are a Nicolas Cage fan, you will definitely get a kick out of this movie. There were tons of neat little references. He fucking wields Castor Troy's guns in the climax of the movie. That is just fucking cool, okay? It's cool! The first frame in this movie is the ending of Con Air. And that's just awesome. Pedro Pascal was great. He and Cage had a real strong and funny dynamic that worked much better than I thought it would. The meta stuff is where the movie is the strongest. Cage and Pascal bond over how they're gonna make a movie together, and it's a bit hard to explain, but at the climax they're, they're sitting in the car, the, both of them don't trust each other, and they're like, okay, so how are we gonna do the climax? And they're like, yeah, let's drive over there to, to the cliff and, and hash out the climax, and then there's a big showdown and stuff. So, yeah. If you know, you know. But the meta stuff was great. The weakest aspects, however, are whenever the CIA stuff is happening. It's a worse movie creeping into this one. I like me some action aspects, but it was handled a bit sloppy. It reminded me of the interview. It feels off, and it just devolves into action-y schlock, but the ending saves it a bit by stating that those parts were all in the movie Cage and Pascal made. At least I think uh, that's what the movie was implying. But it's still schlock. Like, if you shit next to a steak, sure, it's still an awesome steak, but I feel less inclined to eat it now since there's a turd next to it. I mean, it wasn't that bad. I saw Prisoners of Ghostland, and that was a piece of shit. So comparatively, this movie was not that bad, and I will get it on Blu-ray. I will go in for a rewatch.